Hi everybody, welcome back. Thank you for joining me again. All right, so um, I talked with my brother Adam, uh, who is an expert mechanic, um, and showed him the last video. And he informed me that uh, AC Delco spark plugs don't work as well as Motorcraft spark plugs in a Ford engine, uh, which is something I was not aware of. So I think our first order of business today is going to be to switch back out the spark plugs after cleaning them, which we can do. Um, and then we've got uh, some more fuel hose. I got 30 feet of it, so should be able to go back and forth all over again if I need to. Hopefully won't have to. Hopefully that'll fit. It came with a lot of connection pieces. Uh, I just ordered these off of uh, Amazon. Um, it was a little pricey, but uh, like 20 bucks for uh, 10 feet of hose, but it came with clamps, so that's not bad. Um, after we get that done, uh, we'll finish plumbing in the fuel line today. I think we can make that happen. Uh, and then we got the water hose on. It still looks decent. Um, should be able to plug the gas uh, pump back on, which is uh, this little guy right here. Just plug him back in there and that should turn that back on. And then check our fuel pressure at that point. Adjust it with this if we need to. Get it to, you know, maybe like 4, 5 PSI. If we're feeling bold, maybe 6. Um, then do some cleaning and try and fire it off and if we can fire it off uh, an oil change uh, would be great so let us see if we can get that done today now hopefully changing out the spark plugs won't take too terribly long um, but I'm getting to be pretty good at that I think so we'll change them out now for the third time Oh, you know what? Nope, need to clean them first. So basically my plan to clean these uh, old spark plugs that we took out last time uh, is going to be to kind of just uh, uh, hit them with a wire brush um, and uh, maybe either some brake cleaner or some super clean aerosol dissolves grease super easy super fast so we'll uh, check that and see if it works so basically we have the uh, spark plug and I'm just gonna kind of hit it with this wire brush it's already kind of cleaning off some of that grime just to get these all clean again I'm normally not a fan of putting in old parts, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll make it work. Especially old parts you've already taken out. Alright, that's looking much cleaner, so we'll just do that to all eight of them. Alright, well looky here. Little, uh, brake cleaner. Uh, and, uh, whoops. Uh, you only need seven. A little brake cleaner and uh, some elbow grease and uh, a wire brush. And uh, these puppies are looking uh, pretty good. Let's go ahead and get them reinstalled into the engine. Since this is like the 18th time I've done this, uh, I'm not going to go through it step by step. But you can watch me. See if I make a mistake. Just going to go one through four and then five through eight. So on this first one, uh, just from being fired a few times, see it's already starting to get a little sooty. So I imagine the rest of them are going to look like that too.
one. I got all eight of the spark plugs replaced. Uh, number, the ones in the back are no fun. And number seven is really, really no fun because this uh, oil sticky mabop is right here. So it's just not designed for a human being to be able to operate this. But that's okay. We got the Motocraft ones back on. Uh, here are the AC Delco ones uh, from cylinders one through eight. Uh, as you can see, they all look pretty much the same. So at least uh, if we're wrong, we're being consistent. And, you know, that says a lot. Okay, what am I doing next? On to the fuel line. Okay, so right now I'm attempting to get this piece of pipe that was part of the return freed. Um, so maybe I can use it on this piece and connect it to my uh, go out pipe uh, or my go out hose for the fuel um, but so far I have not been able to get this to cut off I'm supposed to turn it a few times and then you know tighten it down um, I might be at the tightness limit of this thing, I don't know. Because it's just, it's just not really tightening anymore. So, if I can get that to kind of come off, we might have an ability to finish up this fuel. But if I can't, I don't know what I'm going to do. So, let's hope that I can do that. This. Yeah. I mean, this should not be a solid chunk of metal. What is this? taking so long. Yeah. Yeah. It slowly I turn. Step up. Ah. Ha. There you have it. A professionally cut pipe. Now, what do I do? All right, well, uh, flaring this end here, um, like the flare job worked out well, um, but it's still too small to be of use to me. So that's no bueno. Uh, so I wanted to see what was in this hose and so I cut it um, and it's like plastic. So uh, I don't know why that is the way it is. But, uh, but that's the way it is. So I don't know how to uh, adapt that fitting. So 
I'm kind of stuck on this part for now. Well, here I am at the end of another day. Uh, all I pretty much got done was putting the old spark plugs back on. Uh, the fitting for the uh, fuel line is plastic and I have rubber so I don't really know kind of how to get that in I tried uh, doing a like cutting uh, the metal piece to try and get that to work in but that hasn't happened hasn't been able to work um, I uh, tried to fire off the engine uh, still getting a backfire so now it's not even running for the 10 or 15 seconds that it used to be um, and you know to be honest with you just kind of hitting the wall like I don't I am well beyond my knowledge of what to do next or how to do it and it's uh, it's kind of getting to me and I don't really know like where to go next um, I've tried playing with the timing um, setting it you know top dead center for the distributor setting it 5 10 15 20 as best I can eyeball it because I can't get it to run long enough so I don't know uh, this is definitely um, the low point for me in the project because I don't know where to go here um, and it is pretty frustrating um, and like I feel like I really got almost nothing accomplished all day um, and yeah so this is a this is a tough portion of this uh, little journey we're on so I'm pretty uh, pretty down about it um, so maybe I can get out here tomorrow and try and get some more stuff done. Right. But uh, yeah, so we'll see on that. But uh, so far, uh, the uh, air cleaner does look nice and uh, valve covers look good. Um, so that's, I guess, where we're at at this moment. Well, the fine folks over at Super Clean decided to send me some of their product to review. I've never used Super Clean before, um, but I do have a pretty dirty car, so I will give it a shot. Um, let's start first with the wheels. All right, so according to the Super Clean All Wheel Cleaner, the first step is to clean one wheel at a time. Check. Uh, rinse it with cold water and apply the cleaner. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Alright, now you're supposed to let it uh, sit for 30 seconds. Uh, if it's really dirty, agitate it with a brush. Uh, it does smell like a car wash though, so that's nice. And then after that, should just be able to wipe it off. So I've rinsed it off and uh, you know it's starting to look shiny again so not bad for a four-year-old tire that's been sitting in the dirt. Gonna give that a positive review preparation for a hopeful oil change let's see if we can't get some of this uh, disgusting crap off of this uh, oil pan shall we we'll be using super clean uh, full strength uh, because boy howdy does that need it it's got years of grime let's see how it works all right first step is to spray the area all right been on there a few minutes now. Let's see if we can't clean it up. A 
Ooh. Well. Huh. I guess I don't have a chrome oil pan, but it is getting clean. Ah. Well, that's pretty clean. Uh, so I'm going to say that was also a success. So if you need uh, a product to clean off some dirt and grime, Super Clean is a American company uh, that uh, tends to make a pretty good, uh, pretty good product. Now back to your regular scheduled program. Yet another new day. Yes, dog. Okay, so we've got a flashlight in there holding that open. Because uh, right now we were able to get it to kick off and run for a few seconds. Um, we may have had the uh, distributor too far advanced. So we really turned it back this direction. Um, but we're unfortunately hitting this little, uh, this little piece here. It won't turn anymore. So, but I think that's kind of closer to where it needs to be. Um, and it was running a lot better when we did that. Um, and then it died. And I think what's happening here is uh, the engine is just getting filled with smoke. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of smoke that's still coming out of it. Um, so, I mean, that would obviously kill the engine if it can't get that out. Um, and I'm not quite sure why that's, that's happening. Um, getting real close to getting the uh, uh, fuel stuff all done. Um, though I have hit a bit of a snag. So, uh, haven't really had any developments since last time I filmed um, on this. I need to figure out how to get something to kind of go in there and then connect to a rubber hose. Um, this rubber hose um, and then I could turn that pump back on but I don't really know how to how to make that happen because if that would work that'd be great but I don't think I can clamp down on this guy and keep it on there. I need something to like hold it so uh, I just I don't know what to do on that part um, my idea of kind of cutting this off and using it and flaring out the end like that um, I don't think is gonna work either because uh, like it's just like not not enough so, I'm stuck there and I also don't know why the uh, engine isn't uh, evacuating that uh, smoke from it, which would probably be why it was backfiring. Well, that may have been because of the advanced timing. So, still working on that, but like, as you can see from the tailpipe area, it is uh, dripping stuff. So, that's good, maybe. When the engine was running for a few seconds, uh, some smoke was coming out of uh, this little guy here, um, which uh, connects to the uh, valve cover, which I think connects to the valve train. So there's a lot of smoke in there, then that would kind of choke off the engine and cause it to die. But why is there smoke in there? Okay, thought. So the car is an 84, so it has smog pump stuff on it. So maybe since we converted it to carburetor, that stuff is not opening uh, to let uh, the air out and fresh air in. Maybe. Uh, I mean, the smog pump is still hooked up. Um, but maybe there's some sort of electronical thing that is not getting a signal uh, to open up. I really 
just have no idea. So, still working on that. All right, uh, let's uh, see if we can get it to fire off for a few seconds. Didn't sound good. There's a little bit of a fire back there, but that's fine. <sighs> I realize that I haven't really shown you guys the inside of this car yet, and it's a really pretty car. Like, you don't see these, see cars made with this kind of character much anymore uh, so I kind of wanted to take you on a quick little tour here if you would so um, as you can see the blinding Sun is in front of us but that's fine um, we have our classic uh, gauges that have the 55 uh, circled now if you if you ever see an older car uh, they'll always have the 55 circled like that because that used to be and I believe still is on the books, the law of the national speed limit um, for interstate highways. So, fun fact for you. Uh, the gauge goes up to 85, which uh, is as fast as I would ever drive a car. Um, and then you've got the uh, steering wheel. Um, this piece right here is something that is impossible to find. This car has never had this since I've had it. And I've been looking online for four years to, to try and locate it. So if you know of anyone or any place that has or sells uh, steering wheel uh, center pieces um, for 1984 Ford LTD Crown Victorias, let me know because I would like to, to get one of those. There's also uh, bench seats in the front and in the rear. Um, and this one, one of the reasons I like this car so much is... Uh, blue's my favorite color, and everything on this car is blue. Uh, the headliner does need to be replaced. That's going to be uh, uh, one of the things I want to do. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, it's a really pretty car. And even more so than that, uh, driving it is like driving, it's like you're sitting on a couch and just riding on a cloud. And I know a lot of cars cars say that but like the suspension in these older cars it's like a boat like when you turn it's like it feels it's great it's a lot of fun to drive and i really really hope at some point uh i can actually take you guys on a drive with it which would be a lot of fun um yeah so that's the inside of the ltd um needs a little bit of loving but uh we're gonna get there Alrighty, here we are at the end of the day, uh, still, uh, still can't get her to run, and, uh, not really sure what else we can do on here, um, <sighs> I mean, I still have the gas line to do, um, I can't really figure out how to how to get that in there the way it should be um, and it seemed to also be like spurting out fire from the back of the carburetor uh, which I don't think is how the carburetor is supposed to work so and like I've, I've just been reading and it's like you know if you have an engine built for you know EFI and you change it to carb like there's some problems you can have with that problems you can have with that problems you can have with that so i tightened that down and that seemed to get rid of that issue um but yeah um 
when you watch uh, videos and shows of people who are working on cars and know what they're doing, um, it's uh, really inspiring. Uh, but they have so much knowledge, like they really know what they're doing. And um, me as a lay person who doesn't really have that knowledge, it's it's really challenging to try and figure it out because there's no like manual that I found or uh, you know uh, a process like I just have kind of a, a general idea and that's not always good enough I suppose um, so it has been frustrating at parts um, and it's been it's been fun though it's been a lot of fun to try and learn and do all of this but I just I don't I don't really know where to go from here guys to be honest with you um, so yeah I just don't know what the next step is gonna be because I've got to figure out how to do the gas lines and then even if I get that done though it's like it's still not staying running and I think it helped um, moving the distributor back a little bit because I'm trying to like pull it back like it, it's hitting on hitting on this guy but pulling it back a little bit did help kind of it run longer but it's still having some issue so guys i think that's gonna do it for today's episode um and i don't know i would really like to finish this car but i just don't know kind of where to go at this point um like my enthusiasm is still high for it but i just like i don't even i don't know what to do um so uh i'll keep looking see if i can figure something out um i really have appreciated all you guys support and everything um and i'm not saying that i'm done with it but i gotta think on what i can do next um because i really do want to try and get this running um on my own if i can um because it, it's a it's a fun challenge it's it's fun to do but uh it may may end up kind of being beyond my skill level um at this time but we'll we'll see how it goes anyway that's all for uh today folks appreciate you tuning in and watching and i hope you guys are having a great time and uh, whatever projects you're working on i hope they're also working out too i appreciate you watching and you guys have a good one.